Now, the Indian cricket team at the start of the test was a completely different picture to the one we saw over the weekend. India outplayed England and has completely deflated the visitors as they will look to avoid defeat in the must-win fourth test match. So, what worked for India? We were talking about the lack of experience going into this test in Rajkot. And guess what? There was none of that needed and there was not, no need for any more of that as the youngsters played some of the most confident cricket to push any utterance of Baz Ball out of the picture. We have to particularly talk of two youngsters, both hailing from Mumbai, Yashaswi Jaiswal and Sarfraz Khan, both products of the famous Maidan way of cricket. What is the Mumbai Maidan culture? Quite a few of them in this current Indian setup, in fact, have literally lived their lives on these Maidans. It's a massive area of land where multiple cricket teams' training sessions are all played simultaneously. Mumbai is a city where there is, of course, a premium on space, there's a crunch. So every inch of land is very, very expensive and crucial. So the idea is to make the most of it. So the large Maidans, the Victoria Maidan, the Oval Maidan, it's a massive expanse where many school matches and training sessions are held at the same time. The famous story, of course, goes of Yashaswi Jaiswal practically living in one of those tents that you see at the corner of those maidans and playing his cricket in the initial years. The boy clearly has the skills. He shattered many records as he went on to score a double ton and it came against a rather ordinary English attack. The boy is special and can you believe it? He's just 22 years old. It took a certain amount of defiance and talent to completely bat England out of any contention. It was, in fact, this partnership between him and Sir Fraz and the agony that the two youngsters piled on that took the wind out of the English team. In fact, we're talking about the records that Jaiswal broke and here's what it was, particularly, in fact, in this test. He's the first Indian to score more than a double ton against England in tests. He's only the third Indian to score 2,000s. 200s, in fact, in back-to-back -back tests after Virat Kohli and Vinod Kambli. He's only the third Indian to score two double tons in a test series after Vinu Mankad and Virat Kohli. He hit 12 sixes in an innings. That's a record. He equaled Wasi Makram when he did this. He overtook Rohit Sharma as the batter with most sixes in a series. And we are all still two tests short. And would you believe it? He is the first Indian to have converted his first 300s into 150-plus scores. Basically, he's already scoring daddy hundreds and he is still a very young batter. That's some hunger for runs. And coupled with a very sane head when it comes to constructing big knocks, it's incredible. And the best part was the skipper Rohit Sharma saying he doesn't want to say much and it's all just started for Jaiswal. Sarfraz Khan, on the other hand, what an amazing story his has been. An emotional debut that he will always remember. 250s in both the innings and he looked so much at ease, like he was meant to be a part of this test setup. Ages ago, Sarfraz looked the most confident against spin and he has made his case for continuing to feature in the Indian 11. In fact, I would be disappointed if he didn't get picked for that fourth test. In fact, just that whole session where he and Jaiswal batted together on day four was it had so many lovely moments, whether it was Sarfraz scolding Jaiswal for not taking that extra run or when Sarfraz was the first to raise his hands and celebrate Jaiswal's 200 and ran over to him to hug him. We love to see such things. It's a testament to good cricket and solid batting and great camaraderie. For that fourth test, Ravinder Chareja, of course, came back strongly as well in this one to stamp his class with his 100 as well as his Pfeiffer, proving to be a critical component in India's success in this format. Let's also not forget R. Ashwin, who had to rush home um, after taking care of his mother. There was a scare there, but he returned, in fact, to finish proceedings. And of course, uh, India celebrated his 500th scalp as well on the course of this test. What will India, England, in fact, take away from this very humbling defeat? Because they crumbled on Sunday. In fact, getting all out for 122 is appalling. Ben Stokes is putting up a brave face in the middle of what has been one of their worst defeats. I've played 100 test matches now and I know that thinking too deep can send you on a downhill spiral. Whenever I speak after we lose, it's what we do next that counts. Games are lost in the head. If we carry anything over, we're already going into next week with a disadvantage. I mentioned in the dressing room 
we must make sure all the emotion and all disappointment is left in there and all the focus goes into the fourth test a reinvention is required something to snap them out of this state of numbness but what did england do wrong if you ask well let's break it down to you they lost the plot on day 3 itself they were in a good position batting in their first innings ben duckett had done some sensible batting they did not have to negotiate arashan as well because he was absent from that day they had to just build on that solid start which they failed to do that was a massive opportunity that just set up their slide then letting youngsters like jaiswal and sarfraz rule the roost i think any visiting team coming out to bat in india for a fourth innings staring at any target post 400 let alone a 500 plus target is immediately fighting history it's never been done and chances are slim from here on as well so even so there was just no vision no direction no fight the batter somewhere seemed to be caught between two vast approaches there was absolute silence no movement at the start of the innings as the english batters seemed to be quiet against mohammad siraj and jasprit bumrah and that looked like them contemplating going the aggressive route the baseball way or the more reserved route but they were just they seemed to be stuck between a rock and a hard place without really deciding i am afraid baseball has been exposed this week It's great when it works. The first test was a pitch that did all sorts, so I get baseball on that pitch. But not the last two, where the pitchers have been absolutely fine to just play with positive intent, but more so common sense. Let's be honest, this could get messy for England. Even when this England team have lost in the last two years, you have always been able to take the positives, or they haven't been hammered. This is looking like a wake-up call that surely sends a message. You can't just play one way against quality teams. Well, he hits the nail on the head. Ben Stokes is clamoring about the umpire's call, that really saying that it should be removed. There may be some truth in there, but I think the larger concern is how is England going to come back from that position now? Because the fourth test is a must-win, and a loss there means a loss in the series. From impeachment to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage from the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill. We know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.